Hey everybody, welcome back to Cure for the Common Game. Today we're going to talk about Imara in deck number 344. So the soul of the Accord is quite different from her her first form. She's now two mana two two, and she brings a buddy with her when she uh, uh when she taps. So uh, she's really you kind of don't want to run her out there in combat because she's you, you know she's kind of fragile at two two. I mean you might get some early hits, but that's about it. So what I wanted to do was convoke. Uh, they've kind of revisited convoke with GRN, and I haven't really built a dedicated convoke deck yet. So this is that deck. Now there's not enough convoke cards to actually make an entire EDH deck. So, uh, but let's get through the convoke stuff first. Okie doke. Uh, Siege Worm. Just a good old standard dude with, with Convoke. He's 5-5 five, five Trampler. Did good work for me as pre-release, by the way. Pause for reflection. Now, I really like this because the, pr uh, the problem with playing against a Convoke deck is that just because we're tapped out doesn't mean we're tapped out. So you can tap all your lands and play your Siege Rhino or whatever, and you've still got a Fog here. In essence, you tap three creatures, as long as one of them is green, you've got a free fall. So that's that's kind of what I love about Convoke. It, it, and you can also tap sick creatures for Convoke, so that's cool too. Pax Favor, uh, another one I had I actually got a playset of these in my pre-release pool. Yeah, probably should have played them. But anyway, it's another combat trick that you can just pull up out of the blue. World Soul Colossus is, you know, just just a big guy. I mean, it's however big you want him to be, how many how many creatures you got. And we're going to have some creatures here. Um, Venerated Loxodon. Now, this guy, this guy I really like. Uh, I have a feeling this is one of those cards, kind of like Dredge. The more they cost it, the actually better it got. So... Uh, but to get a plus one plus one counter on each creature that convoked it, love the verbiage by the way. Arboretum Elemental, he's just a big dude with hexproof and convoke. Sprouting Renewal. Now I like this because you know who doesn't like options? Um, they brought back split cards. Of course, there's you know zero difference in split cards and modal cards. Zero. But anyway. Uh, Rosemane Centaur, just a fine dude with can now overwhelm. It's a convoke. People look, oh, it's a convoke overrun. No, 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 it's not. It does not give the trample, and the trample is worth something. It is worth something so much. I've actually put stuff into just dedicated give of the trample. Now, scatter the seeds. Been around for a while since the original Ravnicats. Just good. You know, to instantly pop out some blockers, or and the beautiful part about this is, it does have convoke. You get those three saprolings. You can then immediately use those three saprolings to convoke something else. So, like I don't know, maybe a sprout swarm. Sprout swarm. By the way, there's some sick and busted things you can do with this. Um, probably not in this deck. I, I mean. We build decks with interactions and synergy in mind, and then we really don't realize it until we're playing it that, oh, wow, I can do that. Now, Seraph of the Masses is kind of er doing everything this deck wants to do. It convokes, it's an Air Force, and it's as big as our dude. So that's, you know, those are kind of the points we're hitting here. Sundering Vitae is a convoke naturalize. Or disenchant, whichever one you want. Kind of the same card, you know. Equinot, I'll admit this is in here because it has Convoke and Flying, and, you know, it's obviously shiny. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room, or shall we say, the worm in the room. I am playing with a Tokthon worm. It's a Convoke deck, it's Celestia. I mean, there's no reason to not to, besides it being a terrible card. But, I mean, 914 can trample. If you get it, hey, 
you're living the dream. But how far have we come, by the way, from a Tokthon Worm at, what is that, 10, 15 mana for a 914 to Impervious Great Worm at a 1660, the largest creature printed in Black Border. Uh, I mean, yeah, the X creatures can obviously need to be bigger, but uh, for 10 mana, we get a, a Convoking Indestructible. Now, the problem here is <laughs> it gets chump blocked by, you know, sapperling tokens all day long. This is why it's so important to have Trample. That's why it's, you know, very important to have Trample. So it had Convoke. I felt obligated to play the one that I, I got for my box in the Convoke deck. So, and that's it for the Convoke cards. Now, I've got other, like, random token makers, you know. We've got the Hazda Marshal, which he has Battalion without having Battalion, because we don't want too many keywords in a set. We have three dudes, seriously. I mean, it's one card, three tokens. This potentially, I mean, can be really good. And, you know, if they fly. The Precinct Captain. He deals combat, you get a soldier. But he's also, you know, a creature himself. So, uh, Sundering Growth. It's a naturalized. And you get free populate off of it. And I would say that the casting cost is probably easier than naturalize, than running naturalized and disenchant. Um, just because it's either or. So it's practically the same almost. Rootborn Defenses. Now this great anti-wrath card. You populate first and then your things get indestructible to end of turn. You know, nice damnation, bro. Druid's Deliverance. Here again, it's a combat damage fog, which most fogs are, but some some of the ex more expensive ones will deal like all damage, prevent all damage, but it also populates. Now, growing ranks is a, I don't know, I know we kind of don't look forward to the four mana do nothing, and it would be, they've fixed that here lately, if you'll notice, the enchantments will like trigger like at the beginning of combat so you can at least get some kind of use out of them that first turn but eh, it's populate I don't really see this being a huge threat on the board I mean it's not like somebody's gonna oh my gosh he's got a girl in ranks we gotta get rid of it but increasing devotion the increasing cards while I think all of them are good to be honest with you five dudes and then ten dudes so that's that's some value right there. Now it's five for five or nine for ten. Meh. Hey, let's look at some ramp. I like pass right by the ramp. Of course, we're gonna. I'm not running as many artifact ramp. I mean, uh, I'm I'm running the four. By the way, here, let me focus in on this here locket. The lockets are the truth. Now, I don't know if I am just being jaded to my view from the pre-release, but it was kind of a slow, grindy format, and many times these were seven mana draw two cards. I played with lockets outside of my colors just because it, you know, it's a colorless mana, if you will, and in a pinch, it's four mana to draw two cards. So, the last time that we got sacked to draw two cards from an artifact, it cost us four, and it was the Hedron. So, I don't know. I kind of like it. Kind of like a lot. Now, I didn't use many artifacts because I, I wanted dudes, but I didn't want to rely solely on one form of ramp. So, we've got a few of the dudes here. Uh, of course, the Lanoir Elf, the Mystic, and Avacyn's Pilgrim, because, you know, this is perfect for the deck. Now, Explosive Vegetation, Ranger's Pass, because I kind of wanted to, you know, I didn't want to put all my eggs in one basket. Some decks I do, this deck didn't really call for it. And Harvest Season. You want to talk about Land Ramp? 
Harvest season. I'm sorry. Harvest season is the truth in this deck because you're convoking, meaning you're probably going to have a whole lot of tap dudes on your turn because most of what you're convoking are creatures, so you got to play those at sorcery speed. So your dudes are all tapped. You know, you've got 5, 6, 20 tap dudes. I don't know. Harvest season? Man, you don't talk about some ramp. I've always loved Harvest Season since it came out. I used it in, like I tried a thing in Standard. It didn't really work out, but eh, I play Standard when I got to to get promos. But anyway, next let's look at, I guess what I'm going to call this batch is an army in the can. You know, the here we've got a four for one. We're playing one card. We get four creatures out of it. And this has the bonus of their, you know, pretty decent creatures. They're 2-2 Vigilance, as well as all your other soldiers. We got the same thing from the cats, except you just get two cats. We got the monk. Now, granted, the monk doesn't pump the others. The others pump the monk. So he, that's pretty good, too, you know. Because we're trying to get as many creatures out on the board as possible. That's what our, our commander is. Speaking of our commander, here she is in her, her first iteration. Now, I would heard somewhere that there was like a last minute swap with her power and toughness and casting cost. And that's why she was 7 mana. Which story-wise, I don't think she had a point in being a 5-7. Anyway. But... It kind of works in the deck because we're convoking, we're getting some tokens, and, you know, it just kind of felt wrong not to have her in her deck. Sound of the Wild is, of course, going to count all the dudes. I mean, for three mana, that's not bad. For two mana, it's even better because Shanna, I mean, she's she's right there, and she has kind of hexproof. Now, I... Know you guys that watched my Shanna video, what was, gosh, that seems like forever ago. That was, what, 80, 80 or so decks ago? Shanna's first ability, people read it as hexproof, but it's not. You can still Doomblade her. You can, you know, they can still target her with spells, just not abilities. Because in the story, she had protection from magic magic didn't work on her so how they translated that into a card is the abilities don't work you can cast a spell and you know to murder her but you just can't like tap something to gain control of her or whatever because no abilities anyway what are we doing what are we doing we're we making tokens we're, we're making tokens so let's have a, a verdant force and then we'll turn Use the embrace to turn anything we can into a a, a token. Now, to vertical off the ancient, depending on how much mana we have, can like totally make some tokens. Any more token makers? Ah, uh, this is kind of a token maker from the new set. Now, some people are 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 calling this what is it? Elf coil worm? Uh, I don't think so. Um, but I, I do like uh, the analogy of two elves in a horse costume. But pretty neat. That's a uh, that's a pretty neat token, by the way, too. I, I'm not sure if y'all seen the token that goes with it, but that's pretty neat. The Conclave Blessing. You know, it, it's going to make that same elf token, and that first ability going to give your creatures trample. It's pretty good. Night of Autumn's a new card. It's just, I mean, it, it's, uh, uh, what is this, the Swiss Army Knife? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, Swiss Army Knight. It does everything. It's a 4-3, or it's a 2-1 with a disenchant on it, or it's a 2-1 that gains you 4 life. I mean, this is just whatever you need it to be. And that staff... I'm sorry, but you know that Celeste symbol on that staff. You know that Joker's razor sharp. Anyway. Um, camaraderie is another new enchantment. Uh, X life, X cards, X is number of dudes, and then you anthem your dudes for a turn. Hmm. Six mana, that's not bad. It's, uh, it's uh, you gain the life 
and draw the cards. Uh, I mean, compare that to like the Shamanic Revelation. Yeah, you're gonna gain some. You know, your life differential is gonna be a little different if you've got a a big one. Let's look at. Uh, I, I guess what we'll call them as helper elves. Since I'm already getting in that Christmas mode, man. You can't. Uh, I, I just can't. Anyway, anointed priest. It's like a soul warden for tokens, so that's pretty good. So I mean, you know, might as well play soul warden too. Quizali Pride Mage is another naturalized variant, but I kind of wanted a dude because whether or not he's tapped doesn't matter. You can tap him to convoke. Exalted will still trigger, and you can still use his sacrifice ability, so whether he's tapped or not. So that's cool. Now, the Phantom General is, of course, going to help out your tokens. Mentor of the Meek, draw you some few cards. Shy here. Um, wow. I like giving my commander uh, hexproof, but I like spending mana and putting a counter on my team, too, because that's a real deal. Of course, I am playing the Rex Sage. Now, all right, all right. I'll show it to you. It's in there. Okay. Dark Ascension gave us this card, Midnight Guard. Two, three for three, man. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield, you untap this guy. So, by the way, degenerate combo incoming. This is not a May ability. Another creature enters the battlefield, it untaps. You woke it up. Okay. Now, several years before, in Shadowmoor, we got this Presence of Gond. So you put the Presence of Gond on the guard, and you make an infinite amount of elf warrior tokens. Yeah, they're sick. They are, uh, I, I mean, it, it, it's not like, yeah, I have a million elf warrior tokens, past turn. I mean, it's not really epic, you know what I'm saying? But it does pump up your big creatures, your creatures that count. Um, it really helps a lot of stuff. And... If you've got something crazy like Parallel Lives, you're going to get twice as many, which, I mean, at that point, Parallel Lives is win more, but Parallel Lives works with pretty much every card in the deck, including the commander. We're just, we're generating tokens, we're going to generate more tokens. Also, the Sigil of the Nalian Gods. Doesn't see a lot of play, because Auras have the stigma around them anyway, but it does cycle in the event that, you know, there's a whole lot of removal and you just don't trust playing it or you don't want to get two for one or whatever. But that ability, plus one for each creature, that's uh, that's pretty tempting. Um, fresh meat. Yeah. I mean, you're going to get wiped at some point in time. I, it, either, it, even if it's just by pyroclasm, you're going to get wiped. So, uh, let's see what we got here. Beastmaster Ascension. It's going to get you there. Take seven counters, but, you know, you just play Beastmaster Ascension and attack with seven creatures, and it instantly turns on. So, man, it's really good. At, and, of course, token swarm decks. Uh, you know, there's a lot of good cards that I don't really have room for in the deck. Um, Cathar's Crusade's amazing, but for each one of those cards you put in, you got to take something out, and I really wanted to focus on the Convoke thing. I didn't want it to be like every other Celestina deck that I had. Now, Primal Rage, is it, yeah, you know it's important to have Trample when you put a card in there that that's all it does. Primal Rage is pretty good, but I really want to get some value out of that Great Worm. I really do, because... That's just I uh, to the almost to the point where I almost put dramatic entrance in here. If you're not sure what what dramatic entrance is, uh, go over to Gather a Scryfall or something. Look that up. <laughs> it's funny, um, especially with the Great Worm. And our last non land card is Vitalize because let's face it, it's 
in a hardcore convoke deck, Vitalize is almost like untapping all your lands. If you've got a ton of convoke cards in your hand, or you know the buyback one, or whatever, wow, you essentially just untapped all your well, a good chunk of your mana because all your creatures at instant speed. So that's pretty neat. I have had some folks in the comments ask about non-basic lands, so I don't have a whole lot here, uh, but I will go through some. Let's look. Of course. I tend to run a lot of like the cycle lands in two color decks because if you need them, there they are. If not, you can cycle them away, draw a card. So there's the white and the green. Now there was three sets of, of these. They've hit them three times, uh, like once in Saga, once in the Amonkhet, and once in um, shoot, I can't remember now. But Colony Garden is a land, and it just get back here so we can see the whole card it just puts a plant out there but that plant is super valuable because you can convoke that plant so this is this is a lot like a double mana land because you get your green out of the land and then you can tap your plant to convoke and really if you've got convoke cards that turn it's almost like it doesn't come into play tapped <laughs> that's kind of why now the crows and verge Every Celestina deck that, I mean, as long as I have these, I'm going to run them. I'm glad they were in C18. Because you just get, I mean, you get two. Yeah, we've got a couple lands that do that, but this is, uh, this can go get your expensive lands that I don't run. Because, let's face it, they're expensive. Celestina Sanctuary, Blossoming Sands, Celestina Guildgate. By the way, there's two new arts on each Guildgate. They're all amazing. Uh, tranquil Expanse. I do tend to use the slow duels or, or, or the cheap duels because, and there's nothing wrong with the expensive lands. It's just that all that I have are in use. These are perfectly serviceable. I've never had a problem. I, I, I use all the slow duels and most of all my decks. And last but not least, of course, V2 Gazi because nothing's worse than, you know, moving to your untap step for the next turn and oh I didn't do anything. I didn't spend any of my mana. I could have had, you know, a sapperling, which is essentially you're spending four mana now to put a mana on layaway for later. So that's what I've got. I do apologize. It's twenty twenty three minutes now almost and I just been rambling. But this was the first deck I started to build because we got the promo for the store championship and we got it a couple weeks early and I had started building and I was super excited about it and I was like, I'm going to have this deck done before the pre-release, before I even get to box and then they started previewing cards and I was like, oh, I need a bunch of these cards for that deck. But anyway, that's what I've got. I do appreciate you watching. Y'all let me know what you think. But right now, I think we're going to shuffle and cut.